Good morning, good morning, good morning. You are joining us for our Sunday, March 3rd services here at Holy and Whole Life Changing Ministries International. Good morning, my name is Bruce Peters and I am a deacon at this church and I am honored and privileged God, to serve in this branch of Zion. Oh, what a gift this is. What a joy. Oh, how marvelous it is to serve God in this branch of Zion, where our pastor and founder, Michelle C. Thomas, leads us to the throne of grace. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all that you have done for us. And so on this uh, Sunday that finds us to gather today in this uh, social media platform, we ask that God, you bless this gathering with your presence. And we have already received notification that your presence is here because we have met and God, we have summoned your word. We have beseeched your word. We have beseeched your presence. And because you have arrived, God, from eternity into time, God, we know that you are here because we can feel the presence of God. Yes, we want to talk about today, God. And as your worship leader, it is my duty and assignment, my responsibility to talk about praise and worship and to lead this branch of Zion into praise and worship on this day. And we're going to talk about peace and hope. And so God, when, when uh, the assignments were handed out, I said, God, what is it that you would have me to say about peace and hope? And so God said, well, Deke, I want you to talk about some things and it's going to be found in the scriptures uh, in Romans 5 through 1, 5 through 1, and then 5 through 1, the New International Version. And so if you can get your uh, Bible and whatever you're reading uh, to go along with us, and while you're doing that, I wanted to provide a little bit of context. There was a psalm, psalmist that said, when I think about the Lord and how he saved me and how he raised me and how God filled me with the Holy Ghost and how he healed me to the uttermost. See, when I think about the Lord and how he picked me up, and turn me around and place my feet on solid ground. I just want to shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so what is that? I began to think about what is it that we're doing when we say hallelujah? It is an a, a, a expression of gratitude to God. It is a thank you to Jesus. It is a word that is pronounced the same all over the world in every language. Hallelujah. And so he led me to this scripture. And so the reading of the word goes like this from Romans 5. And it says, therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that the suffering produces perseverance and perseverance, character and character hope and hope does not put us to shame because God's love 
has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given unto us. And so we ask that God add a, your blessing to this word. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. Abba Father, we thank you. We praise you. We worship you now. Because you, have God, have seen fit. And you, God, are the only one who sits high and looks low. You, God, are the everlasting Father. You, God, <laughs> are the Prince of Peace. You, God, are the mighty God. God, we thank you and we praise you because at each step, each revelation, God, each journey, step away along the way on our journey to Christendom, you lead us and guide us. You inform us that you have ordered our steps, God. And it's things that we must do. It's assignments and roles that we must honor and perform. We must be accountable for because we must fall into place to help you. And as such, God, each and every assignment that we have on today, God, that will lead someone back to you <laughs> on this broadcast, on this uh, service, God, whether you're in front of the camera, behind the camera, a coming God, or whether you're sitting in the pew, the, 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 the virtual pew, and whether you're coming by us to by Facebook and other platforms, you, God, have ordained us to be. You're not tuning in by accident. God has you. I'm talking to you and you and you. He's got you all in the palm of his hands. And he intentionally invited you to pay attention to what thus saith the Lord on this day coming from this branch of Zion. Because it's going to literally change your life. And it is our prayer, God. We pray together. We pray separately. We pray as a family. We pray as officers of this branch of Zion. That God, you deliver restoration. God, you deliver renewal. God, you deliver uh, revival. God, you are Jehovah, the God that healeth thee. You are the Prince of Peace, the peace of God that passes all understanding. God, you deliver brand new mercies, mercies, God. You, God, you deliver rhema bread, God. You deliver power to talk right, power to act right, power to be right. Power for generational wealth, power for generational health, power for generational peace, power. Mm to your people, to do your will for generational victories and all the glory, all the honor belongs to you, our God and our Savior. It is in Jesus' mighty name we pray. We recognize, decree, and declare that we serve you because you are such a mighty God. We thank you, we praise you. In Jesus' mighty name we ask it all. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Hallelujah! Thanks for joining us today. We're so happy to have you. There is no other God under the heavens that deserves our praise. We call him Great Jehovah. He's amazing.
Good morning. Good morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is a hallelujah day because this is the day that God has made and made us available to live in this day. Welcome to Holy and Whole Life Changing Ministries. I am Elder Dr. Linda Deans, and I am here to welcome you here on this Sunday morning to Holy and Whole, where Pastor Michelle C. Thomas is our founder and senior pastor, and Pastor Marion King is the assistant pastor, but the lead pastor down in Surrey, Virginia. We welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you here in this holy place. If we were in person, we would touch and agree. So we are going to touch and agree right here in this virtual space. So I ask everyone, wave your hands, clap your hands, do whatever you need to do to touch and agree that spirit of our Lord. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. My goal here this morning is to welcome you and give you the announcements. But first of all, we'd like to share with you that today is March 3rd. Is that right? March 3rd. And March 3rd recognizes Women's History Month. In fact, today, NASA is sending up a woman into space. Jeanette is going into space later today. So this is Women's History Month. March is also recognition of other, many other things in this month. In the state of Virginia, this is DEIA Month. That is diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility. And as people of God, not just women, as people of God, we are to love each other just as Christ loves us. Other holidays in the month include tomorrow, National Pound Cake Day. Anybody making one? I'll come over. Today is also National Anthem Day. You want me to sing? Lift every voice and sing. March the 6th is National Dentist Day. March 8th, International Women's Day. March 12th, Working Moms Day. March 17th, St. Patrick's Day. March 24th, Palm Sunday. And do you know that March 31st <laughs> is Easter? It is Resurrection Sunday. So it is that March is a month of celebration. We want you to know that on Resurrection Sunday, which is March 31st, we will be back in person. Service will begin at 11 a.m. At this point, we are inviting you to come and worship with us at Riverside High School, which is 19019 Upper Belmont Place in Leesburg, Virginia. We invite you, we invite you to praise him on Resurrection Sunday in person with Holy and Whole. Beginning on that Sunday, we ask that you will join us. If you can't join us in person, you will join us virtually through our YouTube channel. We ask you to do subscribe to our YouTube channel right now. You see here on the screen the way that you can subscribe because once we're back in person, getting our services virtually would be more 
complete if you are watching it through our YouTube channel. We invite you to do that. In addition to our 11 o'clock services on Sunday, we have our Life Application Bible Study every Wednesday at 7.30. We do that through our Zoom platform. Our Zoom platform is on the screen for you, but Pastor Michelle preaches a rich word every Sunday. And every Wednesday, Pastor King will amplify that word through the Life Application Bible Study. So we invite you, we invite you to come, join with us, participate. There is interaction at the Life Application Bible Study. So we ask you to just let the word pierce your heart, both on Sunday and on Wednesdays at 7.30. In addition, to Sunday and Wednesday, each day of the week, we have daily prayer call. The number is there on your screen, but know that you can access prayer from Holy and Whole at 5 a.m., 12 noon, and 8 p.m. We want you to come. We invite you to come. If you choose not to pray, we'll pray for you. If you choose to pray, we'll give you that opportunity as well. We just know that prayer works. So we invite you to join us daily in our prayer calls. Today is communion. Please prepare for communion at the end of the service. We know that when we pray, and when we pray before and during communion, God will give us a new lease on life. So we ask you to participate with us today in our communion service at the end of the worship service. We also have men's ministry. The men meet every third Saturday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Please join them. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And that is what the men do every third Saturday. For additional information, there on your screen, you will see how to contact our own minister, Kimel Daniel, so that you can become a part of this powerful ministry. And you know, the women also have the WOW ministry. You may contact Minister LaShawn Bostic, that information is on your screen, to participate. We have a Holy Ghost good time. So we welcome you to join us. Please save the date. Please save the date. Me Through God's Eyes Women's Conference will be held June 27th through the 29th down in Surrey, Virginia. We're going to get on our shouting shoes and drive on down. So we ask you to put it on your calendar so nothing else will take the place before you put on your calendar June 27th through the 29th. We invite you to this women's conference with Pastor Marion King, who is our assistant pastor here, who does our Bible study here, but who is the head pastor down in Surrey. We want to see you there. Holy and Whole is a wonderful place for you to plant financially. Of course, we want you and your spirit to join us. But in order for us to continue to spread the word, we need you to plant financially 
into whole and whole. These are ways here on the screen that you can plan. Now we know some of you get paid every two weeks. Some of you get paid every week. Some of you get paid once a month. But whenever that is, your 10% should go toward God's work. And I can assure you, it is God's work that takes place here at Whole and Whole. Please consider planting financially at Whole and Whole. We thank you so much for worshiping with us today. You could have been any other place, but you are here with us. And for that, we are grateful. Happy Sunday to all. Amen. Thank you, Elder. We appreciate the marvelous job you did covering the announcements. We will govern ourselves accordingly. And we thank you for all the work that you have done, Elder Deans, and serving our branch of Zion. My last duty today is to introduce the speaker for today. It is none other than Michelle C. Thomas, our pastor, our leader, our founder. If you do not know her, you need to get ready for a time. I had something else and I was going in a different direction, but God flipped the script. And I've been hearing that and remembering that many of us that already know Pastor Michelle, this is, she's a very spiritual woman. And it is uh, it's something that we can anticipate that she moves by the spirit. She's protected by the spirit. And so we think it's not strange that the spirit changes. And so I got one of those changes. And then so I what I was going to say, I'm not saying it, but I hear it now. The spirit of God says, this is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. And Pastor Michelle, it may look like you're surrounded, but you you are surrounded by God. It may look like I'm surrounded, but the words of the psalm says, I'm surrounded by you. And so as a leader of this church, we all have been blessed. If you open your eyes and open your ears and come to this church, Come to interactive Bible study, come to the sermons, and you grab a writing implement and you grab some paper to write down some things, a nugget, a word, a message that comes downloaded explicitly and straight from God. You will find out. This is how she fights her battles. And if you hang around the people of God in this church, you will understand. This is how we fight our battles. We pray and God directs our path. God directs his people. And the one thing that we know is God will never vacate his office. God is always Jehovah Shalom. God is always Jehovah Jireh. God is always Jehovah Tishkenu. God is always Jehovah Rapha, the God that healeth thee. God is always El Shaddai. So whatever message that pastor is preparing for us, I've got my pen, I've got my paper, and I suggest I challenge you because this is what we know for sure. Somebody's going to get healed today. Somebody's going to get set free. Somebody's going to get delivered. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So after the next selection, you hear our speaker for today will deliver the message of God. And that will be none other than Michelle C. Thomas of Holy and Whole Life Changing Ministry International. Thank you, Jesus.
welcome you in this place tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. There's no one like you. There's no one like you. Yes, the world will bow down and say you are God. Every man will bow down and say you are King. So let's start right now. Why would we wait? just want to be with you. Yes, God. We just want to be with you. King of glory, fill this place. We just want to be with you. Oh, yeah. We just want to be with you. Come on, everybody sing. Yes, the word.
King of glory, King of glory, you are in this place. Listen, good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Holy and Hold Life Change of Ministries. I am so excited that you've joined us and decided to worship with us virtually today. Listen, we are going to continue with our uh, series in the book of De De Deuteronomy. Uh, we are studying and we are excited about what God is going to do. Deuteronomy, 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 Deuteronomy. Um, we're going to start at the fourth chapter. Deuteronomy 4. This chapter is pretty ex extensive. Um, it is about 40 verses, if you will. And I'm going to, it's really important because Moses is setting the stage uh, for the children of Israel. This is all of sort of the preface work, the preface work before he gets into the laws and the specificity of the laws that uh, the children of Israel need to be reminded of and to keep as, they're, as they enter into their promised land. This is all of the pre-work. This is the last of the pre-work. And so basically, um, I want to hone in on what we see here in the first four chapters with Moses. Uh, what we see in the book of Deuteronomy uh, chapters uh, one through four is literally good, godly mentorship. Good, godly mentorship. How many people know that mentorship is important? 
Mentorship is important. As they polled, yeah. um, I think a couple of years ago, they polled about 600 top executives from Fortune 500 companies. And they found that of the 600 top execs, um, they had a total of three to 10 mentors three to 10 mentors. And I'm not talking about when they were younger. I'm talking about in their current roles, in their current roles. Not only do you need to be um, mentored while you're trying to get into the game, you need to be mentored all the way up the ladder. Not only do you need to be mentored as a new Christian, you need to be mentored even at the top of the ladder. Um, and you need to be accountable to somebody. Um, you need to be, uh, uh, there's always a person who has done it better and longer. Hello, somebody. There's always a person who has done it better and longer. Um, and, and, and so you need to connect with people who have experience. Let's, let's get into what I would consider godly mentorship, this lesson of godly mentorship in Deuteronomy chapters four. Mentorship. Mentorship is you know, simply put, it's a relationship experience where uh, a person that has more experience help to lead and guide a, a person that has less experience into success. A part, I mean, you can find Webster's definition, you know, go all through the semantics of it, but the what it breaks down into is simply this, a person who is successful with more experience helps to guide a person with less experience into success. Into success. And Jesus is the supreme mentor. I'm telling you, if we're looking for a mentor or how to mentor, all we have to do is look at Jesus because everything that Jesus did was literally about mentorship. He mentored the disciples into leaders, right? He mentored them into their relationship with uh, him and with God. He mentored them into how to treat people better than they were treating them. He mentored them out of their pits falls, if you will, out of their sin, if you will, and into a place where God could trust them and use them and feed them to the world and the gospel could be spread to all nations and is still going 2,000 years ago. That's some good, that's 2,000 years later. That's some good mentorship. Most people's mentorship can't last 20 days, <laughs> right? More or less, you know, 2000 years. And so we are grateful um, that we do have this image and we have this model that we should follow. And, and, and that's what, you know, is meant by the great commission. Go ye therefore and make disciples. Mentorship. You can't make a disciple without mentorship. And so here is Moses living out mentorship, living it out and putting it in the center of the promised land success. If you are to be successful in your promised land, you better have a mentor. You better have a mentor. Who's your mentor? Can you identify your mentor? As a pastor, you know, if I am going to be consecrated a bishop, I better get me a good mentor. I have one. Think about your next steps. If you're going into business, who is your business mentor? If you're doing something in college, you were pursuing a particular degree, who's your mentor? If you're at work and you're looking to be promoted, who is your mentor? If you feel the call for advocacy and act, adv uh, activism, who is your mentor? You want to get into politics? You need to find a, a mentor. You know, there is not one person on this planet, and I hear this term often, that people are self-made. There is not one person on the planet that's self-made. First of all, it's a real big fallacy because God made all of us, so none of us are self-made. God is the creator of the universe. None of us are self-made. There's nothing on this planet that was made in and of itself. That if it was an idea, it had to come from God. 
before it was ever a patent. God gave you the idea and the vision. Good God Almighty. Come on, somebody. And so Amen. to say that you are self-made or something is self-made, it's, it's just not giving glory and honor to God. It's disingenuous. It's disingenuous. And it reeks of, of uh, self-righteousness and reeks of ego and pride. Come on, somebody. None of us have gotten to where we are right now in this world, no matter where you are on the Richter scale. If you up high, come on, somebody. If you are, if you are 7.8 earthquake, guess what? <laughs> and the whole world shake when you come to town. Listen, you didn't do that by yourself. Oh, come on now. I got, can I get one amen? Amen. 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 Yeah. It doesn't amen. matter if you got any measure of funding in your bank. It's not because of you. It is the mercies of God that you've kept your job. Good God Almighty. It's the mercies of God that you've invested. It's the mercies of God and the hand that's on your life that keeps you in the, in the, in the, come on somebody. Oh, you're telling the truth, Pastor. Oh my. Amen. Oh my. Uh, so, 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 so look at this. This is Jesus and his mentoring style. And you see that with the apostles, Lord have mercy, the way he mentored. And, and, and listen, mentoring is no easy feat. There are moments of great frustration. As a matter of fact, Moses disqualified himself for entering into the promised land, trying to be a good mentor. He messed around and got, got mad <laughs> on his mentorship journey. Touch your neighbor and, and, and ask you, are you mad on your mentorship journey? I'm telling you, the Bible says, be angry and sin not. And the sin that Moses committed was not honoring God. God said, speak to the rock, not hit it. That was the sin. That was the sin. And then you should ask yourself, am I sinning? That is, is it a big sin, a little sin? Listen, sin is sin. Are you sinning because you're frustrated trying to mentor? Wow. Now, who does that hurt? The mentee or the mentor? It hurts the mentor because it disqualifies you from the promises of God. Ugh. Listen, so, so let me give you some examples of mentors and mentee relationships so you can kind of position in your thoughts around it. So, so Moses mentored who? Joshua. Naomi mentors Ruth. Elijah mentors Elisha, Elizabeth mentors Mary, Barnabas mentors Paul, and Paul mentors Timothy. Come on, somebody, finding your Timothy. Touch your neighbor and say, you gotta have a mentor. If Jesus laid this model out for us, why would we not follow it? And here it is in Deuteronomy, because you're going to find so many issues and so many examples of what to do in Deuteronomy. You're not, you're, don't let this lesson of mentorship escape you. Because you're going to get excited when they get over to the promised land and you see what they're able to get and attain. And everybody wants to get something. Everybody want to attain somebody. Everybody want land. Everybody want houses. Everybody want their families be, to be okay. But do you want the obedience? Because without the obedience, nothing else is possible. Amen. And so that's why you need a mentor because the mentor uh, solidifies in you a foundation of discipline. Come on, somebody. The mentor, a good mentor, is going to make you do that foundation work. Now, you're not going to like your mentor all the time. You're not going to like your, I had a mentor I couldn't stand. 
And Lord, she done moved out of town. Her name was Shiro Alda. Oh, Lord, have mercy. She woke you up early in the morning. She made you do all these exercises. Oh, my Lord. I would pay good money to have Shiro move back in town to mentor me one more time. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Why? Because it worked. It worked mentally. It worked spiritually. It worked physically. It worked emotionally. I was at the top of my game. When I was working with my mentor, now I'm struggling trying to do it by myself. Mm -hmm. Oh, I wish I had somebody to say amen. 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 Are you struggling amen. trying to keep up with the discipline? You're struggling to wake up and discipline yourself to read, to study, to do whatever it takes in your field because you don't have a mentor. Mentors keep you on point. Touch your neighbor say, do you have a mentor? And or are you a mentor? Because here is God, uh, an example of good godly mentorship. Uh, to say good godly mentorship means that there's an alternative. Good leadership is a blessing. Bad leadership is a curse. Good mentorship is a blessing. Bad mentorship is a curse. And so we want to learn how to do things God's way, the good way. Uh, so in Deuteronomy, uh, let me just read to you probably the first 10 or so uh, verses. And it sets the stage for mentorship. The first verse says, and now Israel, here is Moses talking, and now Israel, listen carefully to these decrees and regulations that I'm about to teach you. Obey them and you will live. So you may enter and occupy the land that the Lord, the God of your ancestors is giving you. Number two, do not add or subtract from these commands I'm giving you. Just obey the commands of the Lord, your God, I'm giving you. Do not add. Come on, somebody underline that. Do not add or subtract. This is super important. The first two verses just say, listen up. Let me have your attention. And he had to call them to attention because there were some things now that was vying for their attention. There was already a, a tribal group who has requested their land. They're getting settled. They, they are, you know, they got the sheep that that attended. They got the 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 cows that att they attended. The goats that they attended. And so there's a tendency for church folks, come on somebody, to be busy with life. And you have to call them to attention and say, "Listen up, this is important." That's literally what Sunday does. Sunday calls us back to the attention of Christ. Sunday calls us back to the attention that there's another place besides this old earth, good God Almighty. There's a place where there's no sickness and no sorrow. And there's a place where there's no famine. And there's a place where there's no hating and arguments and struggle and strife. There's a place called heaven. And we got to get there. And so there's a call to attention that happens. And then after the attention, he says, listen, I need you to be obedient. You need to be obedient to what I'm going to teach you. Not only do you need to hear it, you need to be, you need to be obedient. In other words, the Bible says that we are not to just be hearers of the word, but doers of the word also. And so he's calling them attention. He's saying, listen, I need you to hear and obey. I need you to hear and obey because this is how you will access what you've been promised. This is the key. This is the key to it all. He said, and be careful. Don't you add, once you find yourself entering into this place of success, don't you add or subtract anything from the way, the law. 
Don't add anything to make it over cumbersome. Come on, somebody. Now you done got in by the skin of your chin, 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 chin. Now you want to pile on and pile on rule and regulations. Nope, don't add anything else. You don't have to jump through no extra hoop. Don't add on your tradition. Don't add your culture. Don't add your women's rights, men's rights. Come on, somebody. You're preaching, Pastor. Amen. Don't add your politics, your clanism. Yes. Don't add anything. Your white supremacy. Don't add anything onto this. Don't add any tax. Amen. And conversely, don't take anything away from it. Do exactly what the Lord says. Don't take it away because it calls you to be more obedient than your flesh want to submit to. Oh, well, I don't need to go to church on Sundays because I can have church. right No, no, no. Forget not the assembling. Come on, somebody of one another, whether it's virtual or live. <laughs> oh, no. Well, I can listen to it later. Come on now. Don't add, don't take anything away. This was major. And then he says, hey, listen, now, in case you have short-term memory, you saw for yourself what the Lord did to you at Baal Peor. The Lord, your God, destroyed everyone who had worshipped Baal, the God of Peor. But all of you who were faithful to the Lord, you are God, your God are still living today. Every one of you. He said, look, you saw what God did. He's not playing. He is not playing. He's serious about it. He's serious about being uh, the only God that you worship. He will not share his glory with another. And remember, you saw it with your own eyes. As a matter of fact, it was because you were faithful that you're even over here talking about it. He breaks it down because sometimes in our haste to success, in our haste to get what we want, we think we can skirt God's uh, laws. We think that we can skirt his principles and his plans. We think that we can do what we want and get what he wants for us. Oh, I wish I had somebody to say amen. Amen. And so he he reminded him. He, he reminded the children of Israel that there's a price to pay for disobedience. There's a price to pay for having uh, two gods. Come on, somebody. There's a price to pay for doing some of this and some of that. Oh, I wish I had one person to say amen. And then so verse five says, look, I now Amen. teach these decrees and regulations just as the Lord, my God, commanded me so that you obey them in the land that you're about to enter and occupy and obey them completely. And you will display your wisdom and intelligence among the surrounding nations. Ooh, this is good to me. When people see us being obedient to God, it causes them to wonder, what is that person doing? Who is that person worship? It's sort of like the revelation of the word that says, let your light so shine before men. Come on, somebody. That they may see your good works. Come, Come on, on. Let your light so shine before men, not mm. to show mm. off, but mm. so mm. that the good works that you're doing, they yes. it will be illuminated yes. and they'll be curious. Amen. And they'll see your good works. And glorify the Father in heaven. That's what he, That's what God wants to do. God wants to have all the good work that we're doing illuminated so that people can be attracted to him, not to us. Amen. And not even to the work. There, who, who allowed you to do this work? Because some of this stuff that God is allowing us to do isn't humanly possible. When God, come on, somebody, takes your name, good God, and put it above everybody else's. When God fast track your application, when God decides that he will give you something that you don't deserve, you don't qualify. As a matter of fact, you have been disqualified for it, and God gives it to you anyway. 
Amen. That's our God. He's doing it so somebody can see it and have hope that somebody can see it and say, listen, if God says it and I believe it, that settles it in Jesus name. I'm, I'm looking at this. It says, obey him completely. And you're going to display your wisdom and intelligence among all the surrounding nations. When they hear of all these decrees, they will exp exclaim, how wise and prudent are the people of this great nation. For what great nation has a God as near to them as the Lord our God is near to us whenever we call them? Good God. Come on, somebody. Somebody is looking at you and saying, hey, who is she serving? Who is he serving? Because every time they call on God, God comes. God answers. Every time they say, Jesus, 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 come on. They are not calling the name in vain. They're calling on the God that hears us. Amen. The Bible says that he's faithful to hear us. And that's the blessing that our God is faithful to hear us. Not that he's faithful to do what we want. Good God. Sometimes we want God to do what is even in our best interest. And so because God knows what's in our best interest, sometimes he doesn't do what we want, but he always does what we need. Amen. Oh, I wish I had somebody amen, to say amen. amen. Sometimes he don't give you what you want, but he will give you exactly what you need. And so we got to be uh, good with the fact that God hears us when we call. And he will answer us in the way that he sees fit. His ways are higher than our ways. So in the way that God sees fit is always better than how I could possibly ever see fit. I may not know that at the time. It may catch up with me later. Come on, somebody. Don't get mad at God. You'll get it later. Don't get mad at God now. You'll get it later. Y'all remember the little candy now and later? Oh God. So listen to this. People are going to be watching. They're going to say how wise and prudent are these people. And God answers them when they call. And what a great nation has decrees and regulation and righteousness and fair as it, this body of instruction that I'm giving you today. And then he says, here, here's the warning, but watch out. Be careful. Never forget what your, you yourself have been have seen. Do not let these memories escape your mind as long as you live and be sure to pass them on to your children and your grandchildren. Don't let your mind play tricks on you. Don't get caught up in one moment in time in your life. One moment in time in your life where things are really good or one moment in time in your life when things are really bad, that you have to stay steady remembering what you've seen, remembering what God has shown you, that remembering that God will answer prayers. Remember, come on somebody, when you couldn't make a way out of no way and he made a way for you. Oh man, come on now. Remember when you were in the fields, I, I remember Dr. Dean's talking about her childhood uh, sometime before, and she said she was in the fields picking cotton. And she said, hey, I know good and well that this is not my end, that this is not my fate. I, I have to do this temporarily as a child, but as an adult, Lord, I know that you're going to bring me out of this thing. And so while she was picking, she was calling on Jesus. While she was picking, she knew that Jesus was going to answer. And I tell you, she'd have gone from the fields to the school board. Hello, somebody. Touch your neighbor and said, trouble ain't going to last all way. Trouble ain't gonna last. Trouble ain't gonna last always. Yeah. Trouble won't last always. God will make a way of escape. So let's go back now and let's kind of unpack what we heard. There is a a a buzz, if you will. Everybody wants a mentor. Everybody wants a counselor. But the truth of the matter is, not everybody can mentor. 
And some people don't, that's mentoring, don't even know what mentorship is. And so we already define mentorship as a relational experience between one or more people where the person with more experience and success is able to share the process and share, come on somebody, share uh, some sort of path and, and, and share their experience to the person that has uh, lesser success in order for them to be successful. And so let's, let's just think about this. There is a proper way to mentor. There's a proper way to mentor. And uh, Moses kind of lays out, he doesn't say it, but we can uh, extract this from uh, the chapter four. Number one, leadership. The One of the proper ways to pass on mentorship um, it's through leadership. It's through leadership. The second is through principles. We see uh, that mentorship is being passed on through leadership. And Moses, at this time, he knows that he's already disqualified, but he's continuing to lead and he's leading and not bleeding. In other words, everything out of his mouth isn't, oh, God going to strike me dead. Oh, at some time I'm going to die. Oh, uh, I'm not going to get it in with y'all. But, you know, he doesn't give them a sad humdrum story. He's literally preparing them for their next. To mentors, it doesn't matter if you're more successful than they are. To real mentors, that's their goal. Let's be honest. I, 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 I know that uh, Deacon Calvin has mentored so many people in the track field. He has done it. And he's always looking for uh, when they can outrun him, when they could beat his time. Come on, somebody. Because real mentors, listen, as a pastor, baby, listen, ain't not, there's no prouder moment than the time where I see my ministers, my deacons, my leaders, in the Holy Spirit, under the unction of the Holy Spirit, preaching, teaching, leading, serving, doing all that God has called them to do. There is not an ounce of competition or jealousy because they are fulfilling their kingdom mandate. And that's what you see in the leadership of Moses. He's not being slick hating on Joshua. So and sees a discord so people won't trust Joshua. He's not trying to trip him up and set him up in any old kind of way. Come on, somebody, you've seen it done or you've done it. Amen. You've either seen it done or you've done it. Yes, yes. Oh, yes. my, 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 my. And so here it is, here it is. Uh, it, it, there is a proper way and leadership is a proper way. Principles, give people the recipe. Give them the recipe. Don't be jealous if they pound cake come out better. Listen, Victory, send me your macaroni and cheese recipe. <laughs> I may not be able to make it, but at least I have the ingredients. <laughs> I can make something better than what I'm making. <laughs> oh, Dick and Kanika ain't said a thing. Okay, send us the... <laughs> listen, listen, principles. The third thing, a uh, proper way to pass on uh, mentorship is through values. So leadership, principles, values, those things that we hold dear to us, right? Uh, the, the fourth thing is experiences. I can't beat the fact that, you know, our mentor may have some experiences that I don't have. They can tell you about some times where you were dis or they were discriminated against. Come on, somebody. And so you have to have someone with experiences. And then the last thing is you have to be able to bridge that gap with the new and the next and the now generation. You have to be able to bridge that gap. If you're going to be a mentor, you gotta be able to bridge that gap with the young people. 
Come on, can I get one? Well, I don't like children. You Amen. can't mention nobody. <laughs> Are you preaching good? Preaching good. <laughs> Come on, somebody. You can't mentor people. If you don't like children, you can't mentor people because think about it. When you're mentored, you're sort of like, or you're a mentee, you're sort of like a child. You don't know. You're not the expert on this subject matter. So you have childlike faith that people are going to be giving you knowledge and experiences and, and, and opening doors. You, you just sort of like a child. And if you don't like children, you'll mess around and hurt people that God has meant for you to mentor. Oh, Lord. That's why so many things happening in churches and leadership in churches going wrong because they don't see ch churches and leaders in the church as children. I see my people in the church. I see all my leaders as my children. And I tell you one thing, I'll fight for my children. Come on, somebody. I'm going to teach my children. I'm make sure my children have the best. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. I'm going out on the so list. true. I'm 100 yes, for my children. Yes, Isn't that the way you are about your child? I got my child front, back, side, and middle. I'm telling you. Amen. If my child need discipline, we ain't going to get it in in public. <laughs> Come on, somebody. And, and therefore, I carry that into the church. I don't whoop people across the pulpit. You might not want to answer my phone call. <laughs> but it won't be across the pulpit. Say amen, Diallo. <laughs> Listen, here it is. Listen, we have to ask ourselves, and, and, and I'm telling you, this is going to be very helpful to somebody because you got people out here that think they don't need mentors. Listen, if mentors were not needed, Jesus would never mentor the apostles. If it was good enough for Jesus, it got to be good enough for us. Oh, I wish I had somebody. So, so you have to ask Amen. yourself, why do we need mentors? You know, mentors is, is, is literally another level of one-on-one -on -one training, intimate training. It's not 500 people in the class, 6,000 people in the class. If it's 6,000 people in the class, you taking a class at a big university, <laughs> you're not getting mentored. Come on, somebody. That's yeah. good. That's people good. People complain about, uh, you, you say what you want to about holy and whole, but I tell you one thing, everybody get mentoring in this church. Amen. Every single body get mentoring in this church. And I like it that like that. I'm going to be honest with you. I like being able to be one-on-one -on -one with people to help them through their life path and journey and, and, and to make sure that they are successful in what God has called them to do. And so we need mentors because we need direct training, people that are in specific fields. We are not out here just trying to, you know, do something to be able to make disciples to be able to spread the gospel when we have so many competing ideas and competing interests, it's difficult. In order to be able to have church right now, you got to stop everything you're doing, turn T.D. Jakes off with all the big choirs and production. You got to be able to shut down everybody that's texting you and saying, girlfriend, let's go, let's go to brunch, this, that, and the other. You got to stop Amazon trucks. It's <laughs> you can't walk the dog, wash your car, you know, you listen, in order to worship. In spirit and truth, God got to have your attention. He got to have your full attention or this won't work. We're getting half of a blessing because we're giving him half amen, of attention. Amen, amen, amen. Yes, amen. We're giving a quarter of a blessing because we're giving a quarter of our attention. I remember, uh, you know, uh, Deacon... Bostick told me something. I tell you that thing, I, it, it'll never leave my brain. He said, Pastor Michelle, he said, I get up and I go to work early in the morning, early in the morning. I get up so I can read and settle myself. Good God Almighty. So I can read and settle myself, not in the newspaper, not on Facebook and all the social media. 
but settle himself in the word of God so God can direct his day and order his steps. Touch a neighbor and say, are you, are you, are you doing those types of things? Because this mentoring is going to require that you set up some new disciplines. Set up some new yeah. disciplines. And so why do we need mentors? Because we need one-on-one -on -one training. We need one-on-one -on -one training. I'm telling you, I don't know about you, but I, I need one-on-one -on -one training. I couldn't do what I do on so many levels if I didn't have some trainers. If I didn't have some trainers. Number two, who can, who can mentor? Not everybody can mentor. Not everybody is a Moses. When you looking for mentors, Look for somebody like Moses. Look for somebody with some Jesus-like qualities. <laughs> Hello, somebody. If they are not merciful, you're not going to be merciful. If they are not loving, you're not going to be loving. If they are not kind, you're not going to be kind. So I don't want to be mentored by anybody that's going to turn me into a person that God won't approve of. Amen. Not all mentorship is good mentorship. Touch your neighbor and say, not all mentorship is good mentorship. Here are some qualifications based on Moses, based on his actions in the last four chapters. Number one, who can mentor? You have to, you got to have something that the mentor does, the mentee doesn't. Moses had something that the mentee didn't have. Oh, I wish this was Bible study because I'll make you answer that question. I'm going to give it to you free. I'll give it to you free. He had that relationship with God. He could go to the mountain at any given time and have a relationship with God. Talk to him one-on-one. -on -one. So because he had that specific relationship with God, he had something that the Israelites didn't have. And they needed Moses to be that go between between God and them. You need mentors or we need mentors to be that go between between the truth and us or how to do something and us or success and us. They're the go between. They're, they're going to give you the path. I'm wondering if anybody is hearing me on this. So the, the mentors have something that the mentees don't have. Number two, mentors have to be respected by the mentees. Listen, Moses couldn't be their leader if they didn't respect him. He couldn't be their leader if they didn't respect him. Number three, they have to be God taught and willing to share. Willing to share. They got to be God taught and willing to share. Uh, you know, you can go find whatever type, type of mentors you want, but I, I want God <laughs> on my mentors. And, 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 and I mean that in a serious way, but I'm talking about God taught. I'm not just saying, hey, they need to know, you know, Genesis through Revelation. But there's some insight that only God gives you about a certain thing. That flesh and blood don't reveal this stuff to you. That God gives you these things. I want somebody that's God's talk. I want somebody, I don't know how I knew it. I don't know how it is that I, you know, thought of this thing, but God dropped it in my spirit. I want that type of mentor. God gave it to me in the middle of the night. Now that doesn't mean that you don't go in and understand the science or the math behind it, or, you know, it just means that God is elevating them in the terms of their vision. And you begin to see in greater ways than you're able to see because you have less uh, knowledge of the sub subject matter. Does that make any sense? Amen. Last, Amen. who can mentor? Uh, somebody has that has the desire 
to see you reach your divine potential. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Somebody, I, I want mm -hmm. nothing more for you than to be all that mm -hmm. God is calling for in these last and evil days. I, I want nothing more for you than for you to complete whatever assignment God has given you. I want that for you. Your mentorship wants you to be all that God has called or allowed you to be in this moment and in the future. What are the characteristics of a mentor? And all of this, You'll be able to look back through Deuteronomy 4 and, and look at this. The characteristics, this is how you know a mentor. And, and you could see it with Moses and Joshua. Moses already called out Joshua at least two times since we've been in Deuteronomy. He's already called him out. He's already, you know, kind of started taking him under his wing you know, mentors are able to see the potential in a mentee. Mentors are able to see the potential in a mentee. You don't have to be perfect. They just know your materials are good. Come on, somebody. Raw talent, natural talent. Come on, somebody. You're a natural go-getter. Has anybody ever said that? You're just natural. I remember, you know, watching Deacon Victory over the years. I've told her several times, Deacon Victory, you are a natural evangelist. Natural. It is natural to you to go out and try to help others and share the God. It's just natural. It's, it's natural for you to go and help the sick and shut in and sit with and clean up and do whatever. Feed the hungry. It's natural. Invite them to the church. Come on, somebody, share what you need to share so that they can fall in love with Jesus like you. It's just that some of us just have natural talent and a mentor is able to see that natural talent and not be jealous and not be envious or not want to exploit it. Yeesh. Right? Uh, mentors have patience. Number two, they got patience. Mentors are encouraging. Number three, mentors are encouraging. They got patience. They're encouraging. They can see, you know, something, good qualities in people and not be jealous. Mentors are so encouraging. Um, I remember Barnabas. Barnabas in Acts, what is that, 436? In Acts 4 and 36, the apostles renamed Barnabas uh, the son of encouragement because he was all about that. He was all about that. Last and final characteristic is mentees. They want success for you beyond themselves. They are not in competition with you. They're in completion with you. They are not in competition with you. They're in completion. Let me just give you one more. Five, mentors have integrity. They have integrity. Mentors have integrity. Come on, somebody. They're not going to tell you they're going to do something and don't do it. Okay, there he goes with the fingers. Number one, let me go through the characteristics. Number one, mentors see the potential in the mentees. Number two, mentors have patience. Men number three, mentors are encouragers. They are encouragers. Number four, mentors, they see the success in you and they want your success beyond their success. In other words, they want you to be greater than they are and they have no conflict of interest in that. Number five, mentors are per people of great integrity. What they say they're gonna do, they will do it. The connections they say they have, they got them. Come on, somebody. 
the things that it takes to achieve the success that you say you want doesn't lead you into a, a rabbit hole. It's the same path that they use or even a better path now that they have more experience. Oh, I wish I had somebody to say amen. Now this is good stuff. Amen. Does mentoring work? Yes. Because there are some people who is going to say, oh, pastor, she pe preaching this self-help. No, no, no. This is all from the Bible. This is not my self-help. This is Moses' self-help. This is God's self-help. And you see Jesus' self-help. This is not Michelle's self-help. But Michelle uses it. <laughs> Because she recognized the pattern of success, right? And so does mentorship work? Absolutely. The most successful people in this world will all tell you that they've had several mentors over their lifetime, over their lifetime. Think about it. When you're doing your best, when you were doing your best, did not you have a mentor at the height of your career? when you're just getting started. Come on, somebody. Didn't you have a, a mentor? Amen. Pastor, King Amen. Been Amen. Pastor, Pastor King's been teaching a while. She is probably the senior mentor, but I, I, I would be less than uh, genuine if I would say that she doesn't have any more mentors. That couldn't be true because of the advent of technology. And so if nothing else, she's going to need a technology mentor. In Amen. other words, everybody got to have a mentor or Amen. should, or should, if you want to be your best. And this is what we're seeing in chapter four. He's getting them ready. He's priming them. He said, listen, don't forget this. Don't forget to be obedient. We're getting ready to go over the rules and regulations, but there's some things that you cannot forget. So let's get into the mentorship lessons that he left with him. This is going to be quick and, and you can go dig in it on, on Bible study, but there are seven mentorship lessons that are found right here in chapter four. Number one, obedience is the key to successful living. He says that right off the rip. He says it in verses one and two. He says it right off. If you obey, you're going to live good. You'll enter into the land. Obedience is the key for successful living. Number two, don't add or subtract, subtract anything from God's command. We have to learn that. We have to learn as Christians, stop making Christianity so complicated. Add in the tax of tradition and, you know, culture and come on, politics. And you just make it so cumbersome. Nobody wants to be bothered with it. Do not add or take anything away from the word of God. Oh, I wish I had one person to say amen. Ooh, amen, pastor. Amen. Number three, remember what you saw. He that does not know his history is destined to repeat it or doomed to repeat it. Remember what you saw. Remember the things that were good that you saw. Remember the things that were bad that you saw so that you don't repeat them. Remember the outcomes. Come on, somebody. Remember the outcomes. Remember if you go this way, it don't work out. <laughs> if you leave God out, it don't work out. Come on, somebody. If you decide to worship idols, that ain't gonna work out for you. Come on, somebody, that Confucius and Buddha, and that ain't going to work out for you. Amen. Amen. Oh, Lord. Amen. Oh, Lord. Listen. Amen. So, so Amen. here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Uh, it, for um, that the laws are still applicable. This is you know, mentorship laws are still applicable. No, we don't have sacrifices of lambs uh, or goats, but we, the guidance in it, loving your neighbors and honoring your mother and father. Come on, somebody, not coveting 
not being jealous and envious and not lying and not stealing. Those things are still good guidance. It's still relevant. Come on, somebody. And so this is, this is, it's still good. Don't throw it away. Don't throw it out with the bath water. Come on, somebody. This is the baby. Lord, the people don't want to talk back. All right. Listen, uh, number five, we just got two more to go. Number five, children, parents are responsible for teaching their children. Oh, Lord. I'm so excited about this one. I don't know what to do because we believe that the, the, the school, the church and everything else, the clubs, and the social organizations, everybody is responsible for teaching our children except for us. When you go to church, that should be a repeat that you will already gone through uh, your Sunday school and your golden text. Hello, somebody. You should already be talking about those Bible stories to your children that this should just be a, a breaking it down, if you will, and greater understanding, a deeper dive, if you will. But teaching your children, that's your responsibility. Making sure they know that God that you serve, that's your responsibility. Amen. When Anna goes to church, she already got to know God. She, she got a good base to get started because I have taught her from a baby who God is. She knows who what he requires. She knows his laws and his tenements. She knows his principles. She knows that he's unfailing. She knows that there's nowhere on the planet if she make her bed in hell, God will be right there. Good God Almighty. Come on. Uh -huh. She knows that she can't outrun what God has on her life. Woo. Lord have mercy. Listen, it's our children. This is a mentorship. Uh, this is a mentorship lesson that parents, our responsibility is to teach our children the ways of the Lord. Number six. Idol worship is a non-negotiable. Don't play with it. Don't play with it. No crystal. <laughs> Come on, somebody. No little Ouija boards. Burning sage. Come on, somebody. Chanting. Come on, somebody. Praying to little stuff in the corner. <laughs> Come on, somebody. That's a non-negotiable. There is but one God. There is but one God. It's one Lord and one faith and one baptism. That's it and that's all. Number seven. Number seven. You can make a, a way if you want to. There's only one way. May way maker. There's only one way maker. And he's making a way for you out of no way. It's only one God. It's only one way maker. He's the one that does it. He's the one that opened doors that no man can close and closed doors that no man can open. He's the one that apart the Red Sea so you can cross on dry land. He's that one. He's that one that created everything out of darkness. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. He's the one that blew, blew Ruha breath into our bodies and we became a living soul. That God, that God, creator of the universe, soon and coming king, that God. That guy, it's only one, only one. Hallelujah. Listen, I don't know about you, but this thing got good to me. I want you to go back into chapter four, Deuteronomy chapter four, and just see if you could trace uh, the lessons of mentorship 
And also, I believe that our church is uh, very called. Uh, they are called immensely to mentorship. And so make sure that you are operating in your calling in the best way uh, that you can. And I think that um, chapter four of Deuteronomy will um, be a good guide for you, will be a good guide for you. Join, let's join together in prayer. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word that is always right. We thank you for illuminating it, not just with words on a page, but with purpose in our hearts. Lord, we ask you that you would reveal to us now ourselves, reveal to us now our blind spots, places where we are not aware uh, that need to be strengthened. And God, we ask that you come in by your spirit and strengthen us up. Lord, we ask that you would raise us up, not just as leaders, but as mentors, oh God, following Moses' uh, direction and, and uh, Jesus' uh, model, example, oh God, of how to truly disciple, how to truly mentor so that we can reach those divine successes and those divine appointments and assignments that you have for each of us. Lord, we thank you for this day. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. Listen, we know that this is good ground. And so uh, we're going to prepare to receive communion today. And then we're going to raise the offering and uh, have the altar call. There may be someone here who's not said yes to Jesus. Maybe someone here who's not said yes to Jesus. If you're here and you've not said yes to Jesus, here's your chance. Jesus is uh, the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the way that we receive uh, salvation. That salvation is that gift that gives us eternal life. And so we ask that if it is that you would want to make the Lord your savior, have him to come into your heart, clean it out. God, and, and, and began to allow you to have the strength to work towards your destiny that you would just type in the chat. I want to get saved. I want to make Jesus my choice. I choose Jesus today. If that's you, just type in salvation. Perhaps you're here and you want to uh, recommit your life to Christ. You said yes to Jesus. You walked down the aisles in a traditional church and you put your hands up and said, Jesus, I want you to come into my heart. I accept you know, uh, in my heart, the Lord Jesus, I believe that he raised Jesus from the dead and he's living in me. And if that's you and you repeat it, Romans, then God, you know, uh, but life happens. Life happens. God's still blessed and he's still keeping you, but you're not as close in your walk as you once were. If that's you and you would like to recommit your life to Christ, I want you to type right now, recommit. I want you to type right. I need to recommit my life to Christ. I'm off. I'm off. Somehow I've allowed the world to creep in. While life is life and I've allowed the world to creep in. And if that's you and you want to recommit yourself to Christ, why don't you type? There's no judgment there. I don't know about you, but I've been off. I don't know about you, but there have been some times where I didn't feel as close to God as I should, and I had to recommit. I recommitted so many times, I can't even count them. But I thank God that God was always committed to me, that he never had to recommit, that his commitment to me never left, never left. His love for me never waned. Thank God. If you're here and you want to recommit, just type recommit. Perhaps you're here and you want prayer or you want to join the church. If you're here and you want to join the church, just type in, I want to join. I want to become a member, whether you are a virtual member or a member that's going to be in person with us. That's fantastic. No problem. We'll love you. We'll serve with you. We'll serve you and, and whatever you need from us. We want to be that family. If you are here and you need prayer, you need prayer. No matter what it is, God can handle it. If you hear you need prayer, just type in prayer. If you hear you need prayer or you know somebody that needs prayer, 
just type in prayer. If you hear you need personal prayer, if you hear you need personal prayer, why don't you type in altar, A-L-T-A-R, and one of our deacons, our ministers, will put you in a private chat to pray with you. Again, I'll keep asking that you keep uh, the West family in your prayers um, and the Ramey family in your prayers uh, for the loss of their young daughter. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We give you great glory, honor, and praise, Lord, because you are Lord of it all. Lord, you're the Lord of our lives. And so we come to you right now seeking, Lord, your guidance, seeking your hand of deliverance, seeking, Lord, your heart that heals us, Lord, seeking, God, your ways that guide us out of dark places, Lord, seeking your spirit that fills us and keeps us on a path, Lord, of righteousness. Lord, we just ask that you would touch us, Lord, each and every one of us. You know our situations individually, Lord. You know the things we're praying for collectively. And Lord, we ask that you answer by fire. Lord, we ask that none of us, God, will be left without your guidance and your will, God, and your way. Lord, we just thank you for being all that we need in this moment, oh Lord. Lord, we thank you that there, if they're sick among us, oh God, Lord, we call you right now to their bedside. Now come to their home, send your spirit, oh Lord, and heal them. Lord, you said that healing is the children bread, oh Lord. So we ask that you would heal us of every sickness and manner of disease. Lord, we ask that you would go to them now that may have struggles, Lord, and their families, Lord. Lord, we ask that you would strengthen marriages and strengthen children relationships right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that you wrap your arms around our community, God, as we prepare to bury one of our firefighters, oh Lord. Lord, you're still in control and you're still on the throne. Lord, we ask that for continued healing for all those that are part of that sterling fire, Lord. Lord, we ask that you would just allow the community to continue to support them, not let it not wane because it's leaving the news cycle. But God, it is on your heart, Lord, and so we trust you with it. Lord, we thank you for our church, everyone that's connected to us, oh God. We thank you for what you're already doing. We thank you, God, that you're granting us land to build. Lord, we thank you, God, for what you're already done, what you're doing, and what you're gonna do. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. Somebody shout amen and amen again. Amen. Praise God. If amen. you would just take a, a quick moment and get your sacrament together, and that is uh, your bread and and perhaps your uh, juice or wine if you have it and we're asking that you prepare to take communion we ask that you get ready to take communion if you have it just hold it up and and let us pray father we ask that you bless this sacrament make it holy and acceptable as we honor your sacrifice. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. The Bible declares that on the uh, last night in which the Lord was betrayed, he took the bread and he broke it. And this bread represented his body, which is broken for us. Take, eat all of it. And after that same manner, he took the cup of wine that was representative of his blood, his blood that he shed on Calvary for the remissions of our sins. He said, take, drink all of it. And the word of God admonishes us not to eat or drink this unknowingly and unworthily for we eat and drink our own damnation. And the Lord uh, had them to take communion. And after they finished, they left singing songs and hymns, sort of like, I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, he died up on the cross. I know it was the blood for me. The good thing about communion is it doesn't just celebrate the death 
it also celebrates the coming of Christ. That day when the trumpet sounds and the dead in Christ shall rise first and those that are caught up, that are it with him, uh, that will they will be caught up to meet him in the air. I'm praying that we are uh, one of the two. Amen. Hello, somebody. <laughs> mm, yes, I'm praying, I believe it, that we are one of the two. And so we thank God for you. We know that there's no greater way uh, to start our week than uh, participating in our service. We know that uh, Holy and Whole is a great place to grow and sow and go. And so we ask you guys to join us in supporting the church. And you can do that in three ways. You can give your tithes and offering and donations, and you can give them online, paypal.me, or you can text to give. Uh, that number is on the line, 833-203-6805. Or you can do one of my favorites, which is just Cash App. Simple uh, dollar sign HWLCMI, the initials of our church, HWLCMI. We're asking that you give and support the work of the Lord in Loudoun County and beyond. We thank you so much for uh, all that you continue to do. Um, not just for the church, but with the church uh, to advance the kingdom. Listen, we know that there's only one way to leave here and that's looking forward and not looking back. We leave here every Sunday in a way that uh, Ephesians 3 and 2, 20 describes. Now unto him who's able to do exceedingly, See, abundantly, abundantly, above all we can all ask or think. Hey. According, according to the power, to the power that's power. working in us. Lord, we ask that you allow us to go forward, never looking back. Say it with me. Go forward. 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 In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless Thank you. you Lord. See you next week. We love you. Amen. Love you. Bless Amen. God. Bless, God. Amen. bless God. Bless God. Bless God. Amen. Woo.